So why do doctors use treatments that don't work? In this video, you're going to learn that a surprising number of treatments are ineffective, but still used by doctors. Welcome to Health Drum. I'm Dr. Bert Vorstman, a urological surgeon and former researcher. And this channel is all about patient empowerment and medical truths. By the way, Health Drum provides material for educational and informational purposes only and is not a substitute for professional medical advice. The links to the disclaimer and the material in this video are in the description below. And if you like to get fact-based healthcare information, please hit the subscribe button for me. Okay, so let's get into it and start sorting out medical fact from medical fiction. Let's first examine some medical truths that will absolutely surprise you. The public is under the illusion that healthcare is solidly evidence-based and proven to be safe and beneficial. Naturally, you expect that when you see the doctor that you will receive only recommendations for tests and treatments that are supported by irrefutable and reproducible data for safety and benefits. However, only about 11% of medical treatments are of known benefit. About 50% of medical treatments are of unknown effectiveness. And most published medical research is false. This is a grim reality highlighted by medical researcher John Ioannidis, who found that most published medical studies are false, biased, or cannot be reproduced. Most of the healthcare delivered is generally affordable routine office-based or outpatient care, and healthcare is financially driven, meaning to make money. The bottom line here is that not all standard practice healthcare treatments have been proven to be safe and beneficial. So let's look at the standard of care label. Does this mean that a test or treatment has been scientifically proven to be safe and beneficial? So the term standard of care does not mean that a treatment is proven to work. In fact, it's a legal defense phrase and not a scientific medical certification. It simply means that a test or treatment becomes standard when it's accepted by most doctors, even if there are no reproducible studies confirming benefit. The progression of test and treatment practices to standard of care usually follows this unscientific path. A treatment is believed by physicians to work, then it becomes accepted practice, then standard practice, before morphing into standard of care and commonly without irrefutable and reproducible data for support. It's then codified by medical boards, insurers, and courts as an untouchable truth. Once entrenched in the system, in the treatment landscape, the so-called standard of care treatment becomes almost untouchable, even though it may not be safe or effective. So nearly all medical treatments are labeled as standard of care, but we know that only about 11% of medical treatments are of known effectiveness. So why do doctors continue to use treatments that are of unknown effectiveness? So there are several reasons why scientifically trained doctors continue to use ineffective treatments. A major reason is because most medical care is based upon junk science. A lot of healthcare is rooted in beliefs, opinions, antiquity, and expectations about accepted care practices. And there's an inherent failure by physicians to challenge medical dogma and search for irrefutable and reproducible evidence. As well, there's a fear by physicians of bucking the system and so-called conventional wisdom. Because of these issues, about 50% of medical treatments are of unknown benefit, and about 90% of drugs are effective in only about 30 to 50% of people. So what are some of the other reasons doctors continue to use ineffective treatments? So there are many more reasons why physicians keep using ineffective treatments. Doctors commonly accept what their mentors tell them about testing and treatments. 
rather than demanding to see the irrefutable and reproducible data supporting the tests and treatments to be safe and beneficial. Physicians are notoriously resistant to change. There's a fear of legal and professional reprisals if one strays from so-called standard of care. There are endless financial influences from insurers, big tech, and big pharma, and high quality evidence takes on average about 17 years or more to be included in everyday medical practice. Sadly, financial allegiance commonly replaces scientific accountability, in part because there's a failure of healthcare regulatory oversight to protect patients. So who's responsible for not protecting patients? So the evidence shows that there is systemic abdication of responsibility and accountability in healthcare. Physicians and academia are deeply conflicted. They depend on industry funding for conferences, publications, and so on. Medical guidelines protect revenue streams at the expense of patients. CMS reimbursement policy has essentially locked in outdated procedures, forcing doctors to keep using them. Government agencies have largely conceded independence to corporate interests and are significantly influenced by them. The current healthcare system is prioritized to benefit insurers. In essence, the healthcare regulatory oversight apparatus has become a partner in profit, not a guardian of patient safety. So let's go on to examine some treatments that lack irrefutable evidence of benefit. So here's a screenshot of some of the many treatments that are in common practice and paid for by health plans, but lack irrefutable and reproducible supporting evidence for safety and benefits. Prostate cancer surgery, both open and robotic, lumbar spine surgery for back pain, coronary artery stents for those with stable angina, chemotherapy for most solid tumors, and antidepressant medications. Again, as stated earlier, only about 11% of medical treatments are of known benefit. So here's another screenshot of more common treatments that lack irrefutable and reproducible scientific evidence for benefit arthroscopic knee surgery for osteoarthritis, mammography screening, routine PSA and prostate biopsy testing, statins for primary prevention in low-risk adults, vitamin D and multivitamin supplements. Again, importantly, standard of care and standard practice do not necessarily mean that the tests and treatments have been proven to be safe and effective. Why? because the standard of care label is a legal term that doesn't necessarily mean that a test or treatment is safe and beneficial. So what are the consequences of a healthcare system where most of the treatments performed are of unknown effectiveness? So what are the consequences of using ineffective but so-called standard of care treatments? Patients are misled because they are led to believe that the test or treatment is safe and effective. These unproven but standard of care treatments lead to a waste of billions of precious healthcare dollars. There may be worsening of the underlying condition and or complications as a result of using unproven treatments. As well, ineffective treatments can lead to a loss of income and productivity and an erosion of trust as the gap between medical marketing and medical truths widens. As a consequence of these problems with the standard of care label, a doctor's recommendation for a certain test or treatment doesn't necessarily mean that is scientifically proven to be safe and beneficial. Mostly, standard of care means that it's an accepted practice. So what needs to be done so that the healthcare treatments used by physicians are scientifically proven to be safe and beneficial? So how can we reclaim medical science and integrity? 
We need to redefine standard of care as scientifically validated care. And if it's not scientifically validated, the standard of care or standard practice labels need to be dropped from the test or treatment. We need to demand transparency and every treatment should be supported by irrefutable and reproducible evidence for safety and benefits. All financial conflicts of interest should be eliminated, especially between big tech, big pharma, and the insurance industry. We need to demand effective healthcare regulatory oversight to protect patients, and we need to reward reproducibility, which is to fund studies that confirm or refute existing treatments. As well, patients need to have easy access to honest evidence-based information, as well as cost transparent options. Patients need to be empowered and their decision-making ability needs to be returned. So let's recap. In this video, why do doctors use treatments that don't work? You learned that. So the entire healthcare system from training to regulation rewards obedience and not proof. Only about 11% of medical treatments are of known benefit. However, virtually all tests and treatments are labeled as standard of care. Standard of care does not mean that a test or treatment has been scientifically proven to be safe or beneficial. Finally, true health care reform begins when doctors insist on using only standard of care treatments that are supported by irrefutable and reproducible data for safety and benefits. To learn more about routine medical conditions, self-care and digital health, check out these other videos and if you like them, please share them with your friends.